you look back at the cook that you were when you first entered this competition, and you compare that person, that skill level, to where you are now, it's night and day. Thank you so much, Chef. Whatever the outcome is today, you need to cook. Marita and Eric, well done. If that's the level of cooking we're going to see from both of you, we'll have a very tough decision ahead of us. Marita, what is your entree? I'm gonna do black cod steamed in taro leaves with a pigeon pea puree. Wow. And Eric, what are you gonna be making? I'm gonna be making homemade egg noodles with a lobster sauce. It's time to get started on your entrees. You'll have just 60 minutes to make us the best main course you've ever made in your entire life. The cooking time for your entree starts now! One of my family's favorite dishes, but I'm gonna put an Asian spin on it today because I'm trying to keep it with an Asian theme. I'm gonna use a uh, katara and make egg noodles. This dish is Trinidadian and Canadian meat. So I've got the black cod and I've got some pigeon peas. I love fish and I love it with fresh mango and cucumber chutney. This flavor right here. Looks like he's just about to start working on his noodles. He is, to me, almost the pasta master. He loves working with noodles, and the fact that he's using a guitar, which is a special little device, an Italian device to make those noodles, shows that he's very confident and comfortable that he can make a really great noodle. I think I'm being the right amount of ambitious doing these techniques for my entree because it's all calculated, and I know I can execute it. There's the scotch bonnet. <laughs> I love my scotch bonnet, okay? It's delicious, it's spicy, and it's got flavor, just like me. Oh, that smells good, Marita. You smell it up there? Yeah, girl. Marita, what you working on? I'm working on my cucumber chutney. They're all telling you it smells good. Yes, Chef. Sure does. It sure does, absolutely. I can smell the heat in that, too. It's got a good solid base. Looking great, Marita. Have you worked with black cod before? The good thing about the black cod, it is kind of forgiving. It's gonna I'm be I'm not so nice sure fish. about that myself. Because it is a white fish that is very flaky and become overcooked very quickly. And when it's overcooked, it is dry. And nobody wants to eat a dry piece no. of fish. Keep it nice and moist. Thank you. I have to make sure I cook that cod perfectly. Or else, I'm done like dinner. minutes. You have 30 minutes remaining. You're now at the halfway mark. The cooking of the lobster has to be perfect. Lobster is a family favorite, and I definitely can't let them down because I feel like I disappointed them in the lobster challenge before. How you doing, Eric? What do you have in here? A lot of herbs, uh, spices, uh, coriander, and grass. Your lobsters are chilling? How are they cooked? Are they medium rare right now? They're slightly under. Oh, look at that. How long did you cook these lobsters for? Uh, eight minutes, Chef. Eight minutes? Yeah. Chef Claude thinks I overcooked my lobster. I just have to push through and execute this lobster dish. I can't go home unless I'm Canada's first master chef. Yeah! Can I have some? <laughs> Looking good, Marita! I love that she's making the black cod in the taro leaf, too. So Marita's wrapping her fish and getting it ready to steam. She thinks it's a pretty forgiving fish. So that, to me, is a bit of a concern right now. You have 10 minutes left! 10 minutes! Woo! Eric already cooked his lobster almost to the edge. Now, if he stir fries that lobster on top of the poaching, I'm concerned it might be overcooked. Marita is definitely playing it safe, doing what she knows really well, which might be a very smart move, but only time will tell. One! I'm happy to get a real walk and just cook some Asian food. I'm back in my element, stir-frying these noodles. 30 seconds! Woo! Come on, Rita! Yes! Beautiful! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop! 
In tonight's second course of the MasterChef Canada finale, Marita has plated black cod and pigeon pea puree, while Eric has prepared egg noodles with poached lobster. Let's find out if they taste as good as they look. Please bring them to the banquet room. I hope they brought their passports, because we're going to Trinidad with this meal. The lobster has to be perfect, because I overcooked it last time. If I overcook it again, then what kind of redemption is that? Eric, please bring up your entree. It's uh, homemade egg noodles with uh, lobster sauce, aromatic spices, and then lime segments. Eric. You've learned how to cook lobster to a tea. The noodles are amazing. The sauce, not too creamy and over-the-top rich, but is subtle with flavor. It's a fine dish that I'd serve in a fine restaurant. Certainly one of mine. Thank you. It's impressive. Eric, by using the guitarra, you have the perfect, what we call the Shanghainese noodles. You know, you got that nice, smoky, burnt flavor. Here is when you're mixing East and the West together, and you do it right. Very, very smart. Thank you, chef. If you look back at the cook that you were when you first entered this competition, and you compare that person, that skill level, to where you are now, it's night and day. Thank you so much, Chef. Whatever the outcome is today, you need to cook. I am really nervous. He's getting a lot of positive feedback. Marita, please bring up your entree. black cod steamed in a terra leaf with pigeon pea puree, a fresh mango chutney on top, and fresh cucumber sauce on the side. Maria, the pigeon pea puree, very nice. The tomato, sweet, concentrated, very strong flavor. The mango, bit of sugar you added to remove a little bit of the acidity. You have elevated this very simple dish from Trinidad. You've created a dish, in my opinion, that is a destination dish. A dish that people would travel for, which is a huge accomplishment. Thank you, chef. This piece of black cod, see how moist that is? How it glistens? That is exactly how to cook one of the most beautiful, delicate white fish that we serve in restaurants today. Thank you, chef. My big disappointment on the plate is the amount of fish. It doesn't resemble a full main course portion. Serving one piece of fish is disappointing. Everything else about the dish, spot on. Thank you, chef. Please go back to the kitchen and prepare for the desserts. Thank you, Thank chef. You, I'm super relieved because I got everything done to how I wanted, and that was my hardest round, I believe. Damn, I should have totally added another piece. Two stunning dishes, two very different tastes. Eric has learned how to cook a lobster. I don't think he just learned it, I think he mastered it. I mean, that was perfect. The fish was perfect as well. Marita's dish, the different flavors, the sweet, the sour, the salty, perfect dish. Eric really did take some risks there. His dish required more skill, I would say. This doesn't make things easy for us. It's going to be down to the dessert. One of my trees isn't working. I'm worried about my potato trees. I need to leave enough time to cook my elk, and I'm pressed for time right now. She is so concerned with her trees, she's not paying any attention to her elk. If she doesn't get the elk on in the next five minutes, it is over for her. Come on, Mom. I can tell you right now, Tammy looks worried for her. I think Lynn's unraveling. What the hell did I get myself into? Like, what was I thinking? Lynn and David, you both served us very impressive appetizers, but two more decisive courses lie ahead. Your entree and your dessert. So David, what entree will you be cooking for us? Today, I'm gonna be doing a take on a classic Portuguese dish of pork and clams. These are flavors that my mom taught me. 
I hope I get this right. Lynn, how about your entree? I will take you for a walk in an enchanted forest. My inspiration comes from going hunting with my mom and my dad when we were little. Tammy inspired me to use elk. I am making elk tenderloin in an enchanted potato forest. You will have 60 minutes to create the best entree you have ever made. Your time starts now! I've never cooked with elk before. It's very risky and might be very stupid, but this is the MasterChef Canada finale. I'm gonna beat Lynn this round. I'm elevating this classic simple Portuguese dish by using the wild boar, cooking it confit in duck fat and gooey duck from the west coast. My favorite clam, actually. He's taking a technique which takes hours and hours to prepare properly. How is he gonna pull that off? Also, yeah. he's taking gooey duck, which is tougher than normal clams. When they're overcooked, they're like rubber bands. There is no margin for error. Lynn's also chosen a game meat. Elk is very lean. Cooking has to be done very subtly. That will take about 12 to 15 minutes to cook and five to six minutes to rest. Wow, well, Mom, you look good. That's amazing. Wow, Lynn, what are you going to be doing with these uh, spun potatoes? I'll be making trees. How do you plan to do that? I'm going to wrap it around a wine glass to get the shade, and then I will deep fry it. Oh, that's a unique approach. Look at this beautiful elk here. Have you cooked with elk before? I've never cooked with elk. You never have? Nope. Sometimes you have to take risks, because if you don't, you'll never get ahead, chef. Well, I admire that ambition. Thank Best you. Best of luck with it. Yeah. You got this, David. Here we go, brother. David, are you concerned that you picked raising meat for such a time-sensitive challenge? This is oil. Yes. And I can leave my finger in here. Yeah, just nice and slow. Nice and slow for a challenge like this. I believe that the rounds are small enough that they'll cook through. I want to get that to a medium, and then I'm going to throw it in the fryer. And what about the gooey duck? It's also a very challenging protein to work with. It is, truly. I have worked with gooey duck a lot. It's just simply not overcooking it. You're taking a lot of risks here. I am. And if you pull this off, I'm going to be very impressed. Well, best of luck. Thank you, Chef. You got it, babe. You have 30 minutes left. One of my trees isn't working. I'm worried about my potato trees. I need to leave enough time to cook my elk, and I'm pressed for time right now. She is so concerned with her trees, she's not paying any attention to her elk. If she doesn't get the elk on in the next five minutes, it is over for her. Come on, Mom. I can tell you right now, Tammy looks worried for her. I think Lynn's unraveling. What the hell did I get myself into? Like, what was I thinking? But I know I can do this. The star of this play is going to be the well boar. Porky goodness. Here we go, David. You got this, man. Ooh, yeah, David. Looking good, man. Yeah, baby. Five minutes. At this time, you should be playing. Flip your all time. Look what's happening over here, gentlemen. I'm working at Super Ninja Speed to get everything on the plate. She is building those plates. Unbelievable. That's the way I like it. One minute. You have one minute left. Come on, one minute. This plate is so important. This is everything. This dish 
just fun, it's quirky, it's artistic, like me. As I look at my dish, I'm happy with it. It looks like a restaurant quality dish. David, please bring up your entree. This entree is very personal to me. I just hope I'm making my mom proud. My dish is a wild boar belly with gooey duck clam and brown butter carrot puree. It's an exquisite looking dish. David, you're taking the inspiration from clam and pork. I mean, that's just right up my alley. You know, Asians, we love to mix seafood with meat. Do eat that clam with this wild boar, perfect compliment. And the combinations of textures of everything, it just goes together. The clam is so tender. It is the thing of beauty. Very sophisticated, humble dish from a very sophisticated, humble chef. Your wow factor on this plate is the wild boar belly. Herbs and a little citrus seasoned beautifully. Absolutely delicious. We chefs love to be surprised. And you surprised us with this dish. Nicely done. Thank you. Lynn, please bring your dish up. I hope the judges don't think it's too extravagant or show-offy and that they get my story and my creativity. My dish is a butter-basted elk tenderloin in a potato forest. A bed of a celery root puree. Lynn, your dish has a real flamboyance to it, and you've definitely connected with the ingredients. I think you made one error, though. Something's not perfect on my plate. You spent most of your time with your potato, which I don't think should be the star of the show here. It's the elk. The elk is just a little rare. That's the only fault on the whole dish. Everything else is seasoned properly. The puree is lovely. Just the elk. I mean, the elk seasoned beautifully caramelized all the way around, absolutely beautiful, but it's just a hair on the underdone side. The celeriac puree has that slightly sweet, earthy flavor, a beautiful accompaniment. This is the kind of enchanted forest I could visit. Then, I love stories on the plate, and that story enchanted me. The potatoes and the way it's shredded and the perfect season, you can just eat this all day. All the ingredients, they go together. Enchantment magics happen. Thank you very much. Please head back to your station and get ready to make dessert. I think I made my mom proud with the wild boar and the gooey duck. I missed the mark. My elk is a bit undercooked for the liking of the judges. Once again, we've seen two incredibly strong and different dishes. David's was very much connected in his Portuguese background. He managed to pull off that wild boar belly. I remember, I was the one that was most skeptical about his wild boar. The gooey duck was a knockout punch for me. I thought it was the most sensational, tender, flavorful gooey duck I've ever had. His presentation could have had just a touch more zing to it, whereas Lynn's, the presentation was Wow, big time. I love the story of her childhood. That really touched me. But the elk was undercooked. And the overall concept doesn't work if the proteins are undercooked. This competition is so close, a lot is resting on the dessert. The chocolate bread with the pistachio and the olive goes very nicely with that salty cheese. And the apricot, that's delicious. Hi there, Lynn. Hi, Chef. Can you walk me through each component of your dessert, please? I have uh, pistachio brittle. My mom cooks brittle, and she puts it in tins, and that's what people want for Christmas. Wow. I also have a mascarpone mousse. This is an olive oil savory bread. We all love bread. French people love bread, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I'm making glazed apricots, and that will be served alongside Chateau de Bourgogne. Sounds like you've got a lot to deal with. Yes, Chef. And if there's anyone who can pull it off, I'm going to guess it's going to be you, Lynn. Thank you, Chef. Woo! 
Lynn is already finished. One minute, you have one minute left. He's still got to put his meringue on. It's going to be within seconds if he pulls this off. You can do it, Dad! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! Wow. The last dish. Win or lose, I'm happy with myself. I'm this close to the title of Master Chef Canada. Now, it's time for the most important tasting of your culinary lives. Here we go, Nene. Got this! David, please bring up your dessert. My dessert is a lemon curd parfait on a graham cracker sponge base with meringue. Are you as surprised as we are that you pull this off? No. I wasn't going to give up. Not today. No way. Can't wait to try it. I really adore all the flavors. The presentation to me is unique. There's so many textures happening here. You have crunchy from the meringue, soft from the mousse. The cake is sensational, flawless. You know, David, I am impressed. You really elevated your wife's lemon dessert here. The star of the show really is this lemon curd because the sharpness and the sweetness, that balances perfectly. This, to me, is heaven in a spoon. The mousse is light and fluffy and delicate. The lemon curd, if that had not made it to the plate, this would not be a successful dessert. It's very well done. Thank you. Lynn, please bring up your dish. My dessert's a plate on a cheese plate. It has homemade chocolate olive bread, pistachio brittle, a mascarpone mousse, candied apricots, and my favorite cheese, Chateau de Bourgogne. Well, Lynn, this is an intelligent dessert. The chocolate bread with the pistachio and the olive goes very nicely with that salty cheese. And the apricot, that's delicious. This is a plate I would like to share with my friends. Lynn, the mascarpone mousse. Mascarpone can be extremely rich and heavy, but you were able to present it in a way that delivered a featheriness to it. My only comment would be the brittle because that was the sweetest element. I felt it was a little bit of the odd man out. But everything else was really very, very good. Thank you. Lynn, you've done something very, very rare on this cheese board. You've mixed two ingredients that work so beautifully together, the olives and the chocolate. It's actually one of the most memorable things I've had in the entire competition. I would serve that in my restaurant any day. This year's winner and Canada's new master chef is... Jeremy, what are you planning for your dessert? Milk tea panna cotta with coconut tapioca and jackfruit ice cream. My inspiration for this is my mom. She cooked with all of these flavors. Jackfruit was her favorite. What about you, Mary? What's the dish that you're going to make? A blueberry financier uh, with a buttermilk corn ice cream. This dessert just makes me think of driving up to the cottage with my family and stopping to get corn on the side of the road and, and going to our favorite blueberry lady. You now have 60 minutes to make us a world-class dessert. I got my white apron with dessert. I know it's going to win it for me. Baking comes second nature to Mary, so it's gonna take very bold flavors to beat her. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your 60 minutes starts now. Yeah. 
right now I'm working on my financier, getting the dry ingredients all ready. It's like a pound cake. It's a little bit lighter. There's egg whites that are folded into it. She's pairing that with blueberries and a corn ice cream. I think this sounds actually very intelligent. Corn and blueberries just kind of make sense to me. They both grow at similar times, so Mother Nature wants them to be eaten together. Jeremy, on the other hand, he's doing something that I think sounds really quite adventurous. I'm making a milk tea panna cotta and a jackfruit ice cream. Panna cotta. It, it essentially means cooked cream. So you have to warm up your cream base, flavor it, add gelatine to the warm panna cotta mixture. You then need to strain it, and then it has to set and chill. Jeremy. Hi, Jeff. Do you feel like the underdog in the dessert competition? I've always felt like the underdog, especially when it came to baking, but more so now that I'm going up against Mary. This is beautiful. Look at that. Fresh jackfruit. You are really cooking with the Philippines in mind and your mother in mind. Yes. Incredible. All these flavors, every single component on the, this dish reminds me of her. Good luck. Thank you. Mary, Hello. how are you doing? Are you feeling confident? I am feeling confident. I'm confident with my flavors. It's going to be tasty and different. How do you feel about what Jeremy's doing? His dessert sounds incredible. It does sound incredible, and it's a lot of flavors I've never worked with before. He has a beautiful, beautiful palate. I'm going to have to run to the blast chiller. I'm sorry. Um, don't drop it. I'm worried, I'm worried about this. She's got to get here fast, and that's going to burn. Are you concerned about this at all? No, no? this is actually okay. doing exactly what I wanted to okay, do. Okay, good. You had me worried for a second. <laughs> this is uh, just cream with a bit of sugar and salt, and I'm cooking the heck out of it. It's a brown butter crumb to go under my ice cream. It's really tasty, mm. trust me. How close do you think this competition is right now? Super close. Super close. Like super close. And I am feeling it. I'm going to let you focus on your dessert. <laughs> Thank you. Five minutes, you have five minutes left. Better start plating. The whole competition is riding on this dessert. Look what Jeremy's doing. He's layering flavor after flavor after flavor. That's going to be exciting to eat. Running to get the ice cream. The galleries are looking in amazement right now. They must be really jealous because we get to eat this and they don't. One minute, you have one minute left. Come on, one minute. One Come on, guys. Four minutes. Please bring up your dishes. Milk tea panna cotta. On top is a coconut tapioca topped with fried plantains with a jackfruit ice cream. Well, Jeremy, I think you've created something that is completely and utterly original. So let's dig in. Yo, Jeremy. All that different textures coming together, you know, to me, that is genius. This is not at all too sweet, too sour. It's very difficult to bake panna cotta with milk tea because it has to be very, very strong. And of course, being at the bottom of the dessert, so you're gonna hit that last. Now, that, I guess you could have made that slightly stronger, heavier on the teeth, but I just wanna take spoonful and spoonful. I love it. Thank you, chef. When I watched you prepare it and I heard you describe it, I didn't understand it. I don't like this at all. I love it. Thank you. It speaks to me on so many different levels. Texturally, it's incredibly advanced. The flavors just keep changing and morphing. The top layer has that beautiful tapioca, which I love. And then when you think you figured it out, you dig a little deeper and you find this beautiful tea and milk panna cotta. I've never had anything like it. You took all the flavors that your mom introduced to you and you've just created a new dessert. Incredible. Thank you, chef. 
It is so light and so unique and interesting. The tapioca pearls have a wonderful mouthfeel. You sort of want them to dance around on your palate as you taste that little bit of coconut. You then have that refreshing citrus layer that is so bright and clean, yet still light. This is a great dessert. Thank you, chef. Mary, please bring your dessert up. I made a blueberry financier with some brown butter crumb, some kettle corn for the plate, a blueberry sauce for the bottom, and a buttermilk corn ice cream. All right, let's taste. You know, Mary, the sophistication, you know, really appeals to the professional side of me. But that popcorn, you know, I want to dive in like a kid. <laughs> all the flavors, they all come together. I can taste the corn, I can taste the maple syrup, the crunchiness, the different textures. So everything in this plate works. Thank you so much, Chef. Mary, this is truly a lovely little dessert. The actual cake itself has a sort of a humble quality to it, but with your presentation, you've been able to elevate it. The financier cake has a little bit of a lemony touch to it. It has a little bit of that cornmeal, which adds a nice little texture crunch to it. Beautiful blueberries in there. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Everything works so well together. The corn ice cream is incredibly intense. I like the way you reinforced the theme of the corn ice cream with the popcorn. It feels like a road trip, going up to your cottage, stopping off, picking up some blueberries, grabbing some corn. Amazing. In fact, I'd love to have it on my menu at my restaurant. I think it's playful, it's intelligent. It's all those things you want in a dessert. Thank you so much. You both prepared absolutely stunning three-course meals, and you've made choosing a winner a near on impossible task. But tonight, one of you will become Canada's next master chef. And we need to decide who that's going to be. So please head back to the kitchen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, chefs. Thank you. We find ourselves in a very difficult situation because this is the closest competition we have ever seen. This was about the entire process, but they were both very good, very creative very innovative. So I'm torn right now. I think without doubt, it is the toughest. Jeremy started off with the bison tataki, and then that modern sushi bowl. And then finally, that beautiful comfort dessert with all those southeastern tropical flavors with memories of his mother. My menu may be a little ambitious, but you got to reach for the stars. The title is going to be mine. I think I deserve it, and I think I've proved it. Mary took us on a Canadian road trip. She started off with an elevated take on borscht, which was delicious. And then she moved into a beautiful take on surf and turf, served with crispy oysters, crispy leeks, that potato and onion puree. And then she moved into that beautiful blueberry and corn dessert. I'm going to win this because I know my flavors and I, I finally have a clear culinary voice. It's a teeter tata a couple of missteps in each course. Mary and Jeremy, you both made the decision to follow your culinary dreams. And those dreams led you here to the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Week after week, you braved some of the most punishing challenges that we've ever seen in this competition. But the two of you survived. In fact, you flourished, growing by leaps and bounds with each challenge and presenting us with the finest dishes we've seen in the history of MasterChef Canada. You have now reached a level of skill and artistry that has earned you a place on this stage. Please come up and change places with us. Winning today would be just the beginning. The MasterChef Canada title would change my whole life. I want this so badly. Winning this would be so amazing. Tonight, you both took us on a flavor journey that honored your cultural backgrounds and your families. Every course demonstrated that both of you cook with skill and heart. The three of us struggled to reach a consensus. Unfortunately, only one of you could win $100,000, this trophy, and the life-changing MasterChef Canada title. 
We agreed that one home cook created a menu that was slightly more cohesive and satisfying. This year's winner and Canada's new master chef is... Mary. That's a wonderful job. Every good emotion that anyone in the world has ever felt is me right now. <laughs> this trophy represents everything I've learned and everything that is about to happen. I'm the first lady Master Chef Canada. Yes, it's me. Mary really deserves it. I'm happy for her. I made it this far, and I'm still really proud of what I did. Being second ain't so bad. Oh my god. I know my dad is watching me, and I know that he's here with me. And I know he's proud. Look, 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 it's caught fire. I look over, and my entire pressure cooker is in flame. I put too much port wine in my pressure cooker. I'm freaking out. Five minutes, you have five more minutes left. Both cooks are bringing this down to the wire. I mean, Taya has already started plating. Her dish looks incredible. And Trevor's got nothing on his plates right now. My strategy is to produce very artistic dishes that have a story, and that takes a lot of time. Trevor loves his fine details. He just loves to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. Stay focused, buddy. Oh, yeah. Trevor, let's go! One oh. minute, you have one more minute left. Come on, guys, you can get it done. You got this, girl. You got it. You got this, Taya. Come on, you got this. Trevor, yeah. It's down to the wire on every plate. Ah. This is the most pressure I've ever felt in this kitchen. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. up. That was intense. All right. Absolutely gorgeous, Trevor. Woo! Right. Trevor and Taya, please keep working. Your appetizers look fantastic, and we can't wait to try them. The judges will now head into the dining room to privately taste both appetizers, while the home cooks continue with the entree round. I feel like I nailed the appetizer round. It's exactly how I wanted it to look. It's exactly how I wanted it to taste. Trevor should be incredibly scared, because I know it tastes good, I've been studying plating, and it definitely shows in my appetizer. First is Trevor's braised and grilled octopus with purple and gold fingerling potatoes and a deconstructed lemon tartar sauce. So immediately, I could see this is a dish that Trevor thought very carefully about. This says elevated cuisine to me. But let's see how it tastes. Wow, that's incredible. The octopus is cooked to perfection. It's fresh, it's clean, it's tender. He was able to get the octopus to have a great flavor from that broth that he cooked it in. I think he could have done with a little bit more charring on that grill just to give it a little bit more crispness and a touch of smokiness to it. The flavors of the aioli are incredibly bright and very, very tasteful. And the potato chips, nice and crispy, thin, perfect size. Next up is Taya's appetizer, a Mexican street-style corn with a corn panna cotta zucchini blossoms, a jalapeno lime puree, and a watermelon and mint amuse-bouche. To me, it's clear that Taya has managed to elevate her plate presentation. I think this dish is her defining moment. We have never seen a more elegant, beautifully presented dish from Taya until now. And we have an amuse-bouche as well. Wow, great beginning. The panna cotta is very good. A little on the sweet side, you get that big hit of corn and that charred corn on top. I thought it was just a very clever way to do it. This dish, I cannot see anything wrong with it. And this is very, very rare. Coming from a demon chef, you get all the different tastes. You got the sweet, this bouncing of the acidity from the crema, you know, a little bit of hit slice at the end. The combination, it's amazing. She has really captured Latin American cuisine here. Well, gentlemen, let's get back into the kitchen and see what Taya and Trevor are up to for their main course.
absolutely no idea what the judges think of my appetizer. And quite frankly, I kind of like it because it doesn't distract me. Neither of us knows what the outcome of our dishes were. It just pushes you harder to pump out the next dish even better. My main course is gonna be lamb two ways. I'm gonna be serving it with a celeriac puree. I'm gonna be braising lamb shanks and I'm gonna be braising lamb tongue. Both of my cuts take a really long time to cook, so I'm going with the pressure cooker again. I think the trickiest meat to cook in a pressure cooker is the lamb. There's less fat, and if you overcook that, it's gonna become stringy and dry. It's a lot of added pressure, so I'm hoping for the best. I need to get my ice cream on. Taya is displaying incredible time management. She's getting her ice cream for her dessert in the entree round. My ice cream is gonna take a really long time, so I wanna get that started right away so that if there is any problems with it in the final round, I can improvise and change it up. Trevor should be multitasking like Taya is in order to stay on top of things. I think Trevor is gonna be in trouble. Timing is my worst enemy on this entire challenge, but I thrive under pressure, so I'm loving it. Pineapple, where's my pineapple? For the main, I'm doing a braised pork cheek tamale ball with crispy pork belly and pineapple mole. I'm no longer the girl that got the second chance and just barely made it in. I'm now the best of the best. I can't question that. I'm in the finale. <laughs> you know, mole sauce is one of the mother sauces in Mexican cuisine. It is very difficult to get right. It's about really balancing spices, heat, not an easy task. Oh, it's spicy. Got a little steam coming from your ears, dear. It's important for me to nail this lamb for my mama up there watching down. She's the one that introduced me to lamb, and I just want to make her proud today. <laughs> I want to win so bad, my food dream is to open a restaurant. I'm not sure what kind of restaurant. I can tell you it's going to be called Valerie's, so, though, named after my mama. No boy, Trev. Stay close, kid. He is pulling her pork bellies out. Whoa! Oh. Yeah! Yeah! Yes. Hi. Taya, so you got your pork belly in, I noticed, in the first round. Yes. That was a smart move. Look at the juice coming out of that. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with it, Chef. So what are these balls that you're making? This is the pulled pork cheek with um, the mole sauce. I'm stuffing the tamale and frying it. This is the most elevated cooking I have seen you do in this competition. I'm trying hard to impress you guys. Why did you wait? You know, I think it took me a while to get my confidence in the kitchen. And now that I'm able to cook what I want to cook, I want to show you guys that I mean business. I'm already impressed. Thank you, Keep chef. it up. Thank you, chef. This win would be golden ticket to my food dream. I want to be a food critic. I mean, I got a good palate. I might as well use it, right? 20 minutes. You have 20 minutes left. Just got to get that puree going. The tables have completely turned. Taya is cool, calm, and ready. And Trevor is trying to play catch up. I'm way behind. I'm rushing to get this finished. Look, 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 it's caught fire. I look over, and my entire pressure cooker is in flame. I put too much port wine in my lamb al sabuco. Whenever you add alcohol into a pot, always make sure that pot starts cold. If it's a very hot pot, it can ignite right away and can take away a lot of hair, like Michael. I mean, <laughs> I had to restart it up. I lost a good 10, 15 minutes of pressure cooking time. You got it, you got it, Trevor. I hope my lamb shanks are tender. 10 minutes, you have 10 minutes left. What the heck's happening? I'm deep frying my tamale balls, and when I turn and look, the deep fryer is not to temperature. Shit, stupid fryer. The fryer is still the quickest way to cook this. No going back, I have to stick with the plan. OK, excuse me a minute. I looked down at my lamb, and I couldn't be happier. It's exactly how I envisioned. Beautiful. Get it going, buddy. All right. He's running out of time. My lamb reduction, I got to get reduced before it goes on the plate. It's too fatty. It's too whiny. I'm cutting it really close. 
mean, this is a sauce that needs usually hours of reduction. He's gonna try and do it in minutes. He is really pushing it now. Keep an eye on that for me. Pull it together. I gotta get back on track. I gotta be able to plate. My plating is everything. In five minutes, the server will be coming for the entree. Hot, hot. I'm getting frazzled because I don't have that much time to plate. Look at the focus right now. This is next level. You got this, Trevor. Unreal. We get to taste, and they have to keep cooking. So let's go, guys. Uh, I am getting tired, but I need to keep on going. Trevor's not letting up, so I can't let up. The exhaustion is kicking in, but this is the biggest cook of my life. There's no way that I'm giving up. All comes down to this. The first entree the judges will taste is Trevor's braised lamb shank and lamb tongue with celery -ac puree and vegetables. Judging from looks alone, this is a piece of art. It has this progression of from color to meat. I just love this. He's plating like a true professional chef. Always has, and I think that's one of his strengths. The flavors of the lamb shank, I think, are wonderful. Great depth of flavor. It is cooked beautifully. I would have loved a little bit more of that braising liquor as a sauce, reduced and poured over it. His celery root puree, creamy, delicate, well-seasoned, really nice. The shank, nice and tasty. Mine tongue was nice, soft, and tender. I love these little beetroots. That's an extra touch of earthiness to the dish. I love this dish. The vegetables, I think, are world-class. Perfectly cooked perfectly cleaned, it's really smart. There's not one ingredient out of place. Absolute perfection. Next up is Taya's entree. Braised pork belly and pork cheek tamale ball and a pineapple mole. It doesn't look as good as the appetizer. The color of the tamale ball is a bit light. It doesn't have that golden look that you would expect from a deep fried item. I do think it's a playful take. I love the colors on the plate. It does say Mexico to me. And now it's all down to how it's going to taste. Wow. Boy, Taya can cook. I mean, the flavors here. The pork belly, I think, is pork delicious. Other than I think it could have been pan fried a touch to be a little bit more crispy. The only beautiful combination, the spice is just right. And she's very, very good with heat. But tamari ball is hard, it's doughy, and the pulled pork inside, it's dry. This tamale is actually raw. Completely raw in the middle. Great idea, but you know, the execution was not there. Taya is clearly masterful when it comes to spices and seasonings. She has nailed the flavors of Mexico. That, to me, makes this dish a real knockout. Brilliant. How ingenious is that? The apple jelly is not set enough, so the pine nuts keep floating back up. It's like a whack-a-mole. What is that, Andy? It's going to be a crumb. I know Becky is going to go very high concept with her dessert. So what I'm going to do is go homey and gooey and delicious. Hey, Mama. Hi, Boo. Since I was a kid, Mom would always make this thing that they call a Newfoundland a tout. Basically, dough fried in a pan with a bunch of butter and served with baked beans. What I'm doing here is incorporating molasses and sugar and going to turn it into a donut. This is for my mom and my whole family in Newfoundland. She's really pleased to see me do this. The panna cotta, I would say, is probably the most difficult element of Becky's dish. The key is to make sure that you don't put too much gelatin into the mixture for your panna cotta, otherwise it'll make it way too stiff. I have to get the malted pastry cream out of the way because it has to cool in the fridge. What is happening? 
Just take it out and use a knife. This is ridiculous. Breathe, dude, breathe. This should be incredibly easy to just put plastic wrap over this pastry cream, and I'm battling with it. <laughs> Lots of time. Don't lose it now. Good job, Andy. Yes, it's nice hustle. I think I'm just exhausted. 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. I want to show the judges a completely different type of dessert. I can never afford culinary school, so the only food knowledge that I had was through cookbooks. And now this experience has opened up a whole new world for me. Yeah, I don't think Becky's future is in construction anymore. Hello, Becky. So what are you making for pudding? <laughs> As you know, pudding. That's what we Brits call dessert. What are you making for dessert? I'm going to do a fallen apple. So it's an apple panna cotta with an apple jelly core with some toasted pine nuts in it. Nice. And then this is going to be like the ground. The soil? Yeah. Wonderful. Is there anything a little extra that you're going to do to this dessert? And I'm going to do a gel glaze. And the glaze is going to be going onto the apple itself? Yeah. Sounds like the perfect ending to your apple-themed three-course menu. <laughs> Smells good, Becky. Thank you. Thank you. You got this, Becky. You got this, Becky. I have to start working that dough and incorporating the molasses and brown sugar mixture I have. Fold it over as many times so you have those layers, and then just let the dough rest a little bit to get softer. Hey, Andy. Chef. What's going on with dessert? I'm going to do uh, a Newfoundland donut. Newfoundland donuts. <laughs> oh, is that the one with just the hole? <laughs> I've been to Newfoundland. I've never had a Newfoundland donut. So tell me, what is a Newfoundland donut? It's one of my favorite memories of having this fried piece of bread. They call it a touton. Okay. And dipping it in baked beans. OK, I love baked beans. <laughs> this one is. Uh, uh, molasses kind of folded into a donut dough, fried with some brulee rhubarb. Okay. There's going to be a nice crumb. I'm going to yes. try to make this more homey, make it remind you guys of your childhood, and just make it feel ooey gooey. Don't mess up. I won't. Yeah, keep it going, Andy. Keep it going. Keep it going. I chose some pine nuts and put them in the jelly core, and they represent the seeds in a natural apple. Brilliant. How ingenious is that? The apple jelly is not set enough, so the pine nuts keep floating back up. It's like a whack-a-mole. I have no idea if this dessert is going to work until, like, the last minute. Five minutes left. This will be your last five minutes in the Master Chef Canada Kitchen. They're perfectly golden brown. If you have extra donuts, throw a couple of them up here. <laughs> She's just taking a small piece of her panna cotta and doing a little test of her glaze. This dessert has to be perfect. I'm going to ditch the glaze. I don't really like it. Look, look, Becky just threw away her apple glaze. She's just thrown it out. Wow. No more apple syrup? No. It just looks too fake, like the color and everything. She has a lot of suspense coming from a 19-year-old. If something doesn't work, she takes it out of the picture. Two minutes! You only have two, two minutes, minutes left! Two minutes! Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. I know my daughter, she's focused, she knows what she's doing, and she's gonna get it done. So close. I can't believe this is real. I'm just a bag of nerves right now. One minute! One minute left! Look, that's the best I've ever seen. Come on, guys! Beautiful! Come on, guys! Keep it going! Keep it going! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. So insanely proud of Andy, and I think he nailed it. I can't believe I actually just did that. <laughs> Amazing, guys, you did it.
Andy, Becky, congratulations to you both. <laughs> really amazing. It's time to taste your third and final course. Please follow us into the banquet room. I just have to leave it in the hands of the judges and hope that everything's OK. I did every single thing I could, and I'm happy with the result. I just hope that all the dishes tell the story of who I am and the direction I want to take food. So as you can probably tell, we're very excited about the final leg of this journey. I'm happy to present this dessert, but it's nerve-wracking getting the feedback. Becky, please describe your dessert. My dessert is a fallen apple. It's a apple panna cotta with an apple jelly, a soil, a sable twig, and a sugar leaf. Where's the glaze? I just thought it would be too fake, that red color from food coloring. So I just wasn't comfortable serving it. Nothing wrong with that. If it doesn't belong there, don't put it there. Let's dig in. The flavors are somewhat familiar, yet unique and different. Familiar as far as the panna cotta with the apple jelly within it. The soil has a deep, rich flavor to it that is such a strong anchor to this dish. This is one of the most original desserts I've had anywhere. There's a lot going on, but you can sense what is going on. So nothing is overpowering. And I like the journey you have taken us on with the apple. All right, Andy, tell us about your desserts. It's a malt pastry cream with a molasses brown sugar rolled Newfoundland Towton, some brulee rhubarb, and then wheat cereal and ginger snap crumb. Looking at it, I would love to dig into that. Let's try it out. That rich, decadent, malted milk pastry and that familiar taste of rhubarb, which is slightly acidic, but so complementary and beautiful. This is a titan of Towton's. I didn't think that rhubarb would work with port because one is very sweet and elegant and the other is very rustic. But that marriage does come together. I think it's one of your finest moments. I do wish that there was maybe a sorbet to cut through the dense nature of the donut. But it really delivers. Thank you, chef. However this turns out, you should both be very proud of what you've done tonight. Andre and Jennifer are racing to finish a grueling three-hour finale cook that will determine which of them takes home a $100,000 prize and the title of Canada's newest Master Chef. The final dish, your dessert has to be ready in two minutes. You got it, Dre, come on. Two minutes? Got it. Oh, that's nice. Can I find words to describe how I feel? I've never been so proud of Andre in my life. Come on, Andre. Go for it. Looks great, Jennifer. Just to see Jennifer in her element doing what I've always known her capable of doing is amazing. Woo! One minute. You have one more minute left. Come on, one minute. Come Let's on, go. Get out. Come on, guys. Look how soft that ice cream is that Andre's scooping out. It looks gorgeous. Whoa, let's go. Wow. These dishes look pretty incredible to me. Yes, Jennifer! 15 seconds! Finish strong, finish strong! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and off! Amazing! That was incredible! I've literally given everything into this cook. Like, nice. I'm super wiped and I'm super pumped that I just finished it. Yeah, you did it! Oh my gosh, that happened. That happened! I'm so proud of myself. We did it! You did it! Wow. We were. Now it's time to taste your final course. Please follow us into the banquet room. Come on in. I 
I feel so grateful and excited. Like, the emotional roller coaster doesn't quite capture it. It feels like when I used to do track and field in high school, I just feel nerves, nerves all over. Well, Jennifer and Andre, I bet you're dying to find out what we think of your first two courses. Let's start with the appetizers. Andre, your lobster and Callaloo rundown was bright, colorful, and packed full of flavor. Wow. You know, I really enjoyed the rundown sauce. I just wish there was more of it. Mm. And there was one little misstep on your plate. It was those dumplings. They were a bit tough. Jennifer, after tasting Andre's succulent lobster, we weren't sure how celery was going to compare. But your ants on the log won over even the demon chef. The blend of flavors and textures elevated this dish into something truly unique. And now for the entrees. Fusion done poorly can be more like confusion. But this was not done poorly. You took the best from Caribbean and Korean cuisine and put it onto one plate. I just couldn't stop eating it. I finished the entire plate. Oh, my gosh. And there's no better compliment than an empty plate. Oh, thank you. Jennifer, we've come to expect every dish that you create to tell a beautiful story. And this one was no exception. And your flavors, perfect. But there was one problem. Oh. My lamb needed more time in the pressure cooker. I'm sorry, chef. Right now, I just feel like it's anyone's win, honestly. You both got good reviews. Andre, please tell us about your dessert. Today, I have a deconstructed toron. I paired it with a stout sauce, also a Chinese five-spice waffle, some caramelized plantains for the crunch, and the snow is a grapefruit soda snow. I'm a sucker when it comes to the desserts, and I just love a really well-presented dessert. And this looks inviting. It looks fresh, it looks clean. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Andre, I love the different elements in here. You have the Caribbeans, you have the Philippines, you have the Chinese all put together. But what I like is the balance of spice as it goes from the ice cream with the Irish moss with the nutmeg. And then it goes to five spice into the waffles. And then you end it with the grapefruit. A great blend of spices, of different textures. Just a small tip. It's so missing a little bit of salt because sometimes on a very rich dish like that, so can cut it down and bring out more from the spices. Okay. The ice cream, it's just perfect. Perfect consistency, flavor, texture. That is a great ice cream. With the backdrop of the wonderful crumbs, which does represent sand in a kind of way. It's part of the Caribbean. It's certainly what I look for when I go to the Caribbean. <laughs> This dish to me is modern Jamaican. It is really sophisticated, but yet it's very playful. And I see that you really pushed yourself to hit a new height. It's amazing to see just how far you've come. It's amazing. Thank you, Chef. Watching the judges taste my dessert was a real treat. It feels great that they understand exactly what I tried to do. Jennifer, please describe your dessert. Tonight, I've made one of my favorite dishes, treat cereal. There's a chocolate soil in the bottom. I've puffed a variety of different rices. I've made some marshmallow meringue. There's a chocolate ganache bed for the sugar-cured egg yolk. And I've tea-smoked milk. This isn't just a dessert. This is an experience. Oh. <laughs> wow. Jennifer, that first mouthful is a bit of a mystery as to what's in there. The second mouthful, it starts to define each flavor and texture. That subtlety of the smoke of the milk, that rich, complex flavor of the ganache, the texture of the puffed rice. There's something grown up about it. If there was one adjustment, one caveat, mm -hmm. I would like just a little more sweetness but it really is a tremendous dessert. 
Thank you, Chef. All these sweet cereals that I missed as a kid, the ones I craved, I recognize it all here. So my dream has come true, but in a sophisticated adult way. Oh, thank you, Chef. This dessert is absolute creativity. It's somebody who's really mastered technique, flavor. You can't teach this. This is one of the most original desserts I've ever had. Thank you, Chef. I kind of just wanted to give them some of the sense of wonder I have felt the entire time I was here. I'm just so happy. <laughs> Andre and Jennifer, I think it's safe to say that the three of us are floored with the quality of both these meals. We're going to need a few minutes to discuss. Thank, Thank you both. Thank you, Chefs. Thank you, Chefs. Jennifer and Andre, those chef's jackets that you're wearing are a symbol of what you've accomplished and of where you're going. A career in food is unfolding for both of you. Both of you made incredible meals that we felt privileged to eat. In the end, we decided that one of you took us on a culinary journey that cannot be denied. That home cook will win $100,000. This trophy and the life-changing title. This year's winner and Canada's new master chef is... Jennifer. Oh my god, Andre. Oh my god. I am Master Chef Canada. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so I finally figured out what I want to be when I grow up. Or like not totally grow up, but you know, I figured out what I want to do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a winner, honestly. I'm not leaving with the trophy, but I'm leaving with a million skills, new friends, and a new path. You Thank did you. amazing, buddy. Thanks, Alyssa. You should be so proud. I'm definitely not scared to step into the culinary world anymore. Just can't wait to go on it with my dad. It's going to be great. <laughs> This whole thing has felt like such a fairy tale for me. I have so much gratitude for like every single part of this. May the best home cook win. It's gonna be Andre. <laughs> what else? Onion powder. He moves like a chef, acts like a chef, talks like a chef. He's capable of such great things. Any sugar? What most impresses me about Jeff is how poetic she is with her food, the way she conceptualizes it. It's really, really unique. I just want this whole thing, actually. Andre deserves to be in the finale. He's getting back to his roots and cooking the food that he loves to eat. But uh, I'm on team Jennifer because watching her cook is, is magical um, and her food tastes amazing. Andre is Canada's next master chef. But damn, this is gonna be a really good battle. <laughs> Jennifer, what do you have in store for us? For the appetizer, I'm going to prepare you fancy ants on a log. For the main, we'll be having Mary's little lamb. And for the dessert, I will be preparing you a treat cereal. Are you taking inspiration from your childhood? I fought really hard to kind of maintain my sense of wonder that I had when I was a kid. And I hope it speaks to your inner kid today, too. Andre, what inspiration are you drawing on today? Today, my menu is inspired by my entire family. So for the appetizer, I am making a lobster rundown. It is a coconut milk cooked down lobster. For my main, I am making a curried goat basam. That's a Korean dish, and I'm putting my take on it. And for my dessert, 
I'm making a deconstructed toron, which is a Filipino spring roll. All right, Andre, Jennifer, for the last time, are you ready? Yes, yes chef! The time starts. This is a three-hour cook. They do not stop. This is going to be absolutely fascinating to watch. These two home cooks really have very unique and different styles. I am making fancy ants on a log. A traditional ants on a log is you take a log of celery, you fill it with peanut butter, and then top it with raisins. It's a fun way to eat some vegetables. <laughs> Growing up, this was a snack that I had in my school lunch, and I just didn't think there was anything cooler than ants on a log. Jennifer. Hello, chef. Ants on a log. So how are you going to make it great? This version is with blue cheese, a celery juice vinaigrette, and pork poached eggs. I really want it to look like a bit of a sculptural art piece that you get to eat. Okay, well, you have always inspired us and impressed us with your beautiful plating. Thanks so much, chef. Don't let those ants run loose, eh? OK. I'm working on the rundown, so I got a head, a tail. Oh yeah, boil it. I'm doing this for my dad. He always made rundown at his restaurant, and it would fly off the shelves. That's gonna cook up a bit. Hi there, Andre. Hey, chef. So tell me about your appetizer. A rundown is basically fish cooked down in coconut milk. And today I'm elevating it by putting lobster with a kalaloo puree and boiled dumpling. So I'm assuming that you've cooked lobster this way before, mate? Never. Never cooked lobster? Never cooked lobster. Do you think that was wise, pulling lobster out on such an important night like tonight? I got to pull out all the guns today, so. Taste every element, right? Yes. Seasons like a king. Roz, I need a sous chef, man. <laughs> 100% the hardest part of the appetizer for me is the celery. I'm a little worried because it takes a lot of skill, which she has, to elevate such a humble vegetable as celery. Because the backbone of this dish is celery, and Andre's is lobster, I have to allocate a lot of time and love and care into this celery to make it the best celery the judges have ever had. If she can pull this thing off, she's gonna wow us. Hey, okay. Yeah! Celery looks good. Thank you, thank you. I'm making the dumplings today like some gnocchi. It should take about five or six minutes to get a nice cook on it. Dumpling time. I'm looking down at Andre's station, and his dumplings aren't boiling. If they sit in just warm water, they get tough. I don't know what's going on with it. Not a good move. That's not good. I'm trying to shoot for the stars right now. I cannot make any mistakes today. Oh, dear. You need that heat of that water just to almost put a seal on them and allow them to cook slowly from the outside into the center. I want to make sure that it's cooked properly. So I change burners, and I put it on the blast burner, and I crank it up. Good. Do your thing. So you only have 10 minutes left before we start to taste your first course. We are moving. Time is the most important ingredient in this kitchen. Jennifer, what's next? I'm going to make a blue cheese mousse. We're going to stay focused. You got it. I still have to do so many other components. Almost, almost, almost. My brain is just in this mode. Good job, Jennifer. Good job. Look at those okay. tails of lobster that he's just cooked. They look spectacular. He has amazing intuition. Oh, nice and soft. I'm going to start plating. Five minutes. You only have five minutes before the first course. Both Andre and Jennifer right now are feeling the heat. Everything has to be beautiful because this is such a simple dish. More salt. I want all of the bites to be perfect and all of the bites to be just a little different. OK, here we go. One minute. Come One on. minute. You got this. Come on. Nice. That looks amazing. Wow. Thanks, guys. Looks fabulous. Thank you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. Wow. Andre Jennifer, please keep cooking. We'll excuse ourselves to the banquet room while we try your appetizers. I think the way I treated every element on this plate makes it a finale-worthy dish. I hope so. 
I don't care that I never cooked lobster before. This is my last cook in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. You got to go big or go home. First up for tasting is Andre's Lobster Rundown with a coconut callaloo puree on a bed of boiled dumplings. I love what I see on the plate. It's Caribbean Carnival. It's all about those great colors. And I think the proportions are really spot on. You can see there's a lot of imagination behind the dish. It is a good balance of savory, sweet, bitter, and you can identify it all. Nothing is overpowering each other, which is very, very important. You can see the lobster is perfectly cooked. I can't believe this is Andre's first time ever cooking a lobster. This caralou puree. It is silky smooth, and I like the coconut reacting with the usually very bitter flavor coming from this very leafy vegetable. There's only one misstep in my opinion. The dumplings are slightly tough, and that's because his water was not boiling. Oil. Next is Jennifer's appetizer. Fancy ants on a log made of pork poached figs, a celery brunoise, and a blue cheese mousse. She has taken a very childlike dish and elevated it to restaurant quality. I look at it and I can't wait to tuck into it. It seems almost simple in the beginning, but once you taste it, you realize the complexity, the fine detail, and the finesse to it. In there, you get so many complex textures. I get the crunch from the, the walnut and the celery. And then you have the blue cheese, full of flavor, but it's also balanced. It's very hard to balance blue cheese. There's so many different juxtapositions happening on this plate. It's a really, really smart dish. I mean, this is the kind of dish that you could see in, may I say, a Michelin-starred restaurant. This is just spectacular. When I tasted the lobster, I thought, how is a celery and blue cheese dish going to compete with a dish of Andre's caliber and quality? Any ingredient in the right hands can be sensational. We've never had a three-way race, and these three competitors have very unique approaches to cuisine. <laughs> Taya has a Diverse. reputation for great flavors, great plating. She loves to stick to Mexican flavors, and she does them exceptionally well. You know, Andy really shows tremendous resilience because he has probably had to work the hardest out of all of the cooks. He's cooked in almost every challenge. He keeps coming back, though, stronger, much faster, more experienced. That battle hardening could play to his advantage. Where's the shrimps? With Christopher, he's got an incredibly creative mind. Expect the unexpected has become the norm. Ah. For my appetizer, I'm making a spot prawn ceviche served with a Thai coconut soup ice cream, which is going to act as a soup of the ceviche. So as it melts, it keeps your ceviche cold. I'm doing this appetizer for my fiance because we were supposed to have a destination wedding in Thailand. So since we couldn't, I'm going to try to bring a piece of Thailand to my appetizer today. Andy, how are we doing, Chef? Did you ever think you would be back in a MasterChef Canada finale? Not in a million years. <laughs> Walk me through your first course. So anywhere you go on the East Coast, you're going to find incredible seafood platters. So we've got uh, pan-fried scallops, some cornmeal fried oysters. We're going to have some pickled mussels, some green apple vin to lighten it up, and a big dollop of caviar to get the party rolling. Just remember one thing, though. Make sure they're not too rustic. Elevate your dishes 100%. Push yourself. Thanks, Chef. You're doing great, Andy. So hot in this jacket. I'm doing a snapper crudo with crispy skin, and then I'm doing a whey cucumber foam and a compressed cucumber in lime. Snapper is something that is very common on Vancouver Island. And as a child, I used to go fishing all the time with my dad, and we used to go to the marina and eat fish tacos. So this is kind of like a super elevated version of a fish taco. Okay. Deep breath. 30 minutes! 30 minutes has Good gone up. by. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up! Push, push, push. You got this, you got this. I look at my ice cream base, and it is just goop. I realized I added way too much thickener to it. I can't believe I made such a basic mistake. 
Christopher looks really stressed right now. Come on. I knew coming into this course exactly how much starch I needed to add, and I still managed to mess it up. I'm panicking. No, I need to thin it down a little bit. I put a little too much starch in it. Come on. The only way I can fix it is by blending it with more chicken stock and cream. Good call, Chris. Yep. And then I'm going to try to fortify the flavor with some more fish sauce and lime juice, and hopefully that will save it. Yeah. Better? Yeah, much better. That looks better. Now I hope I have enough time to finish it in my ice cream maker. Cooking is not just a physical act, it's a mental act. There's so much pressure, especially when the stakes are so high. I'm 100% worried about the balancing of flavors. I want a pronounced cucumber flavor, but allow the fish to shine. Take a look at Taya. She is using the Mila vacuum pack drawer. I've put in lime juice and extra cucumber juice, and then it will compress all into the cucumber. So it's like extra juicy. And that has infused them with flavor. So cool. Lots of cucumber. 10 minutes, 10 minutes to your first course. OK, where am I at? Back home, if you order a seafood platter, it's basically a pile of fried seafood. I need to make this refined. I'm worried. Andy has a lot of different seafood for his appetizer dish. It has more moving parts than the other two home cooks. I'm checking my ice cream, but now I don't have enough time for it to set in my ice cream maker. I don't know. I don't know. What can I do to freeze this ice cream in the last minute? Can I get liquid nitrogen? And here comes the science. I'm going to try and pour liquid nitrogen into my ice cream machine to cool down my soup really rapidly so that it can finish freezing. OK, come on, cool for me. Liquid nitrogen, it's risky, risky business. If you add too much to your ice cream base, it will turn into rocks, and it will actually seize that machine. It will stop it from churning. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Yeah, Chris. There you go, Chris. There is a bit of a risk, but I have no choice. I have to get this done. Oh my gosh, OK, stay calm. Snapper is a very delicate fish. Oh, she's torching it. I'm crisping up the skin, but keeping the base raw. Just need to be a bit more. We just have to be really careful not to overcook it. She's got some bro torch on crudo. It's pretty and it's effective. Stay calm. Two minutes. You've got time. You got this. Okay. This whole competition is going to come down to the smallest of details. Andy, that looks so good. I'm fanning away the smoke from the ice cream machine, and I look in, and my ice cream's starting to set. Yes, Chris, beautiful. One minute! You only have one more minute left. One okay, more minute. On. Come on, guys, Come the final on, minute. Going. Final minute, one more minute. Come on, push it. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes. Servers are coming to pick the appetizers now. The judges will now head to a private room to taste all three appetizers. The first appetizer up for tasting is Christopher's Spot Prawn Ceviche, marinated in calamansi and chili and served with a Tom Kagai ice cream. I like the plate, it's very colorful. The Tom Yum Kai is going to melt and provide the dressing. These flavors are super dramatic. It is really about the Tongai being so icy cold and super refreshing with a little bit of heat to it. Those gorgeous, sweet, tender, succulent shrimp served raw are just loving bathing in this bath of wonderful flavors. Overall, great control of flavor, acidity. I wish there was a little more of the calamansi dressing because it had wonderful depth of flavor, but you needed more of it to cut through the heaviness and the richness of the coconut. The next dish up for tasting is Taya's, a red snapper crudo with a buttermilk whey foam, masa tuile, and compressed cucumbers. You know, I like the presentation a lot. I think the foam is perfectly executed. I like the cucumbers the way they're just these little wafers. And I like the way she charred the top of the skin. That was a really nice little finish to the dish. I find the flavors to be a lot more subtle. There's a little punch from the jalapeno pepper, but for me, it is lacking just a little bit of simple sea salt. 
I love the way that the acidity, the chili is coming in from oils, in foams. The flavors are coming in different directions. Good concept, love the presentation, and it's innovative. Last up is Andy's appetizer, a seafood platter containing seared scallop, crispy oysters, pickled mussels, and an apple vinaigrette with caviar. I like his simple approach to the plating. It is clean and tidy. I love the beautiful green vinaigrette it's on the bottom. That really is a backfoil that shows off the gorgeous seafood. I love the different flavors coming out. The scallop perfectly cooked. The pickle mussel, well done. The acidity goes very nice with the texture and the umami coming from the mussel. And the green apple is a nice touch. It's a very strong dish in terms of both taste and execution. The caviar, I thought, was a great touch. It really shows luxury and confidence. I think this is one of his crowning moments.